How was your role? My role? Yeah. As and what did you do, you know, in helping and creating it? You remember what you I kept a I kept a painter alive and talking. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a coffee and sugar, uh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it was cold out there, mm -hmm. and uh, I hate to see her, you know, being out there by herself in the cold, trying to create a problem, or solve a problem. That uh, to a point, uh, as I said, uh, on deaf ears. Uh, she could have froze to death out there. She could have got lead poison. Um, all kinds of things. So I was kind of like a band aid to, uh, not a band aid, a piece of tape holding the pages together. Oh, uh, how did you? Why was a mural picked instead of doing a different project? I don't know. You have to ask Angela. When and how did the mural project begin? When and how? Yes, I have no idea. Uh, the Chicago mur muralist Mark Rogovin came to Champaign the spring of 1978 to do a mural workshop. Did you remember who came to the workshop? No, I didn't go. Who else was involved in the mural's creation? I have no idea. Except for me and Ansel had uh, feedback about what should be applied and what not should be applied. Had conferences, small talks. Mm -hmm. But other than that, uh, basically it was her decision on what went there and what went uh, you know, how the mural was designed, yeah. square footage and all. When did you know you wanted to be an artist? Way before the mural. Uh, how was that? Uh, that question was asked to me not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Um, I guess by watching Mickey Mouse at the widescreen theater, or at the downtown theater. And then they showed me how you can make Mickey Mouse dance and move around. Or Stickman. Not so much as Mickey Mouse, Stickman. You take a stick, you know, you draw little circles and you draw little arms out, with little legs, where it may be, and then you put it on cards, like ten cards, mm -hmm. and you take it and you flip it through, and you make the little man run down the thing. Yeah. It all depends whether or not you got a hundred cards or whatever it may be. Or how fast he runs or how far he runs. Um, elementary school. Washington. I learned between Washington and uh, Loghead School. I would say. Had a number of influential teachers there. It was a very good international school at that time. Same thing got going now. So it was more black and white. And it was more positive uh, in, uh, direction towards the arts or creativeness than it was than they have now. Because they have the modern facilities now and they cut all the art programs out and put in laptop computers. Whereas you used to sit down, this is the first time I've ever seen a young lady write. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's type it out on a uh, back on laptop or something like that. I thought the art was lost. Uh, you know, they don't have time for it anymore. It's too time consuming. Mm -hmm. They'd rather punch it out on a computer. And yet, they got the modern, uh, modernization of computers, and they don't know how to operate it to punch it out. Because it's too fast for their mentality. Mm -hmm. Or y'all young mentality. And if y'all do create something that's unordinary, they're going to black it out. So, you know, you're caught between, you know, either drawing a, say, a, a, if you want to look at it to a point of uh, drawing a Martha Luther King or Malcolm X or, you know, whoever, or Jesus Christ, or a white man, a black man, or whatever. You know, Jesus Christ. Uh, 
all depends on who wants to block it out. And whether or not that people, those people in power are displayed, just like I said, we've been fairly, I've been fairly neutral here in Champaign Urbana since I was raised and born here. But a lot of people ain't made it. All because of political views and political uh, uh, statements that were made, uh, whatever, and uh, wasn't accepted. Uh, not that they were bad, their educational views. Everything you have to look at in terms of educational views. But some people get all routed and heated up, or whatever it may be, and to a point of. Uh, you say, well, like, uh, is it worth it dying over something like that or anything? It's all good, but <laughs> that gun, it takes a lot of pain and a lot of beer and a lot of whiskey sometimes to wipe that stuff out mm -hmm. because it's programmed. Not like sitting down writing, but it's programmed on TV, on radio, on film, or anything. And you just can't wipe it out regardless of whatever you do, or edit it out or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's how life is. Who's your mentor or, or role model? Here in Champaign, Alabama? Anyway. Well, Martha Luther King was, I think, the greatest person to a point that ever lived. Not because he had civil rights ideas, because he solved two problems he didn't realize, he didn't have a chance to realize who, what he solved. I went down to uh, uh, Memphis, and I saw a number of years ago, just like we had a garbage man here called Mr. Willis. Uh, mm -hmm. Before him, a couple other people that was here in Champaign about him. Uh, let me get back uh, to Martha King, how he relates. This gar these garbage men, these black garbage men, I guess along with white garbage men at the same time, used to have 55-gallon drums. Big steel drums they used to carry oil in. And everybody would take and dump their garbage into these drums. And they told me at the time, they says, well, we don't like a certain person. So they don't play a lot of funny trick on them. They take a five or ten pound bag, a, a block of concrete, and put it in this barrel. And put, you know, garbage, not bags. You have the black bags they have now but put garbage over on top of it. And then all the garbage cans wouldn't be out in front of your house like you used to have now, like they have now. They have it on the backyard or the backside of the house because it's like hot as it is now. It smells so bad that the garbage man had to come around to your backyard and either he had a bucket or pick that whole garbage can up and take it out to the truck and dump it. Well, you know, guys get busted down in the back and whatever it may be and and all this type thing, and then they say, a well, lazy so-and-so don't want to work. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's all in good. Now they have plastic, black plastic bags, they have black, they have garbage cans on wheels. And if you told a man back then, and said, why don't you take a wagon and put that garbage can on it and pull it from your backyard to the, to the curb, just a little simple little wagon with wheels on it. He'll tell you, he said, well, we'll mess up the man's grass. I said, well, you know, to me it's logical. Either mess up the man's grass or mess up the man, the other man's back. Okay, well, it's a mean inexcusable, but the grass is not. I said, okay. Well, Martha King to a point says, well, uh, I guess over the banner or somewhere they start the recycling project. Mm -hmm. They're going to put the wheels on garbage cans, and then they're going to you, have you putting bags, garbage in plastic bags. And then turn around and have you put the garbage can on the have you put the garbage can on the side of the road on the side of the street, so that it was easy so a woman could turn around and pick up these garbage bags and put the man out of work. We have women over in Champagne to a point pick up these sterilized bags, throw them in the back of the dumpster, and take it to their husband who has a big dump truck and dump it all in there at one time. You say, well, how much money is this young lady making? And how much credit does she give because if she want to give any credit at all to Martha the King? So, you know, 